microphone. Um, yes, hello. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, PIDA test fixtures. Um, um, PIDA test is a. It's not amplified, just the recording. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's not amplified. Sorry. Uh, if you can't hear me, do I, am I speaking loud enough? Or yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, PIDA test has many uh, gr great features. It's a, it's a it's a great uh, testing tool that can kind of scale from from uh, small unit tests to big integration test suites and everything. Um, it's got ma many uh, interesting features, uh, like na native asserts um, that, that work correctly uh, is a very good one, and uh, I don't know, uh, plugins is maybe another uh, great one. But I'm just going to be talking about the um, fixture mechanism in, uh, that PyTorch test uses in this talk. Um, hopefully, you, you've sort of seen uh, PyTorch test before. Uh, if not, it's probably not. You can probably follow it anyway. Um, it's it's all fairly straightforward, I think. I don't rely on anything um, too weird. Um, I'm going to start with quite uh, si simple kind of introducing fixtures, uh, the, the fixture mechanism quite gently, and then uh, as time goes on, I'll, I'll um, kind of use more and more advanced examples. Um, I'm not sure we may run out of time. Uh, I'll kind of see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, what are fixtures? I mean, in the loosest kind of term, fixtures are things that the code that you're testing relies on but that you don't actually want to test yourself so it's sort of something you want to like if, if your function that you're testing relies on other, other objects or something you may want to create that object or you may want to um, mock it out or something like that um, so that's sort of what fixtures are um, generally um, most people will probably be familiar with the X unit pattern um, that's what's used by the unit test standard library unit test module as well. Um, I'm just showing the standard library unit test um, here, here as an example, not specifically picking on it or anything. But this is what, what you'll fami be familiar with. So right at the bottom, there's a test function that you actually want to run. Um, and the, the, the test framework, wh when, it, when it invokes that test, it will first execute the setup and tear down methods on the unit test class you, you've created. And for each and every test that it, that it will execute, it will, it will call setup and tear down. And then you can, you can do the setup stuff you want to do there. Um, la later on, they, they added uh, class methods for setup and tear down and, and module uh, functions as well. So, so, so to kind of get different levels of, of uh, persistence what, f of, of your fixtures kind of thing. Um, but the, kind of the problem that that kind of is is that it kind of ends up being all tangled together. So if you have two independent things that you need to set up, for example, you're going to have to do that in the same setup method. Um, and it, it's hard to compose as well. So if you have two uh, t t tests that need the same kind of setup, they will have to, if it's a setup method that you need to use, they will have to end up living in the same uh, test cl class, um, or either that, or, or you, you're going to have to m move around um, weird things or share code, etc. So um, PyTorch test kind of introduces fixtures in, in a very different way. And the first time, um, well, the first time I saw this, I was kind of, you know, really surprised by, by the approach that it takes. But it actually, once, once you get used to it, it, it really makes sense. So what PyTorch test does, it looks at your test function, um, at the, the second function here, and it looks at the arguments it takes, and it looks at the name of the argument, and it's, that's the name of the fixture that I, uh, you want to get. And when, when it executes a test method or test function, um, it, it will look for the fixtures that are defined. And fixtures are defined uh, at the top with the pytest.fixture decorator. Um, and for each test that requests that fixture, pytest will execute the, um, the, the fixture function. And the result will be passed in as an argument to the test function. Test functions can request multiple fixtures as well, so it's kind of um, not nice and composable in, in a way. Um, and, and that's essentially, that's, that's the basics of it. Um, if, you, if you run this, um, I, I run with QS, which is like kind of um, quiet to a bit less output, and S um, kind of disables spider test as a um, IO capture method, so when you get a test failure, um, you, you get output um, next to your assertion of your, of your test. Um, so I'm disabling that to, to just demonstrate um, 
when, when, when the fixture is getting run. So in this case, you can see that the fixture is getting run before the test is executed. The dot is a uh, successful test, by the way. Um, so that's when the actual test is getting executed. So that's a very basic kind of by the test approach to fixtures. And building up on that, it, it, it's, it allows you to make really quite complex um, test suites. Um, that was obviously just set up, not tear down. Um, for tear down, PyTest um, basically uses this request finalizer um, method. So the test fixture itself can can um, take an argument, uh, an argument called request, um, and that has a couple of methods um, that that can be convenient. Uh, and the, probably the most used one is at finalizer, and that's basically how you do you do f finalization. It's fairly often to see, just like here, to see as you finalize it being defined as in a closure. Um, that's just, it, it's kind of convenient because you put your um, fin finalizer right next, to, right next to the setup code and you probably end up creating an object that you want to use in your finalizer as well. So as a closure, kind of makes that easy um, to, to, to use that. It's not obligatory. Uh, you can also add more than one finalizer and they will, as you, as if you look on the right, on the, um, uh, how it's run, that they're actually being finalized in the reverse order that, that you um, created them. So if you if you have different fixtures requested by your test function, all the finalizers will be um, run in, in, in the, the, the right order kind of thing. Um, yeah, and that's basically um, how you do tear down in a pilot test fixtures. Um, Next one is probably useful to talk about uh, the visibility of your fixtures. And this is kind of fairly natural, really. There's no, no, no real surprises here. But essentially, you can, you, you can create, uh, if you create a fixture at a um, module level, all test functions in your module are going to be able to see the test uh, function. But if you only create your test function inside a, um, in, inside a class, for example, then only that class is going to be able to see the, the, sorry, the, the fixture. Um, li likewise, you can you know you, you can define the same fixtures as, as, as I've done in this example here in, in, into a different uh, into two different um, classes, and and each the, the method, test methods from the, those class will see a different fixture. Um, so if you so so here I, I've returned different different um, strings for for both uh, test fixtures that are that are, are called the same, and if you look at the output of that. Um, this is kind of the, the standard, the most standard um, pilot test output. If you haven't seen that before, uh, you get colors as well on, uh, normally. Um, but yeah, P pilot test tries to be kind of helpful, and and, and it shows, you know, and it, but this basically dem just demonstrates that that the two fixtures, um, the two tests uh, functions, see dif the see the different fixtures. Um, so visibility is kind of useful when when you start looking at. Um, Building big, uh, uh, your test suite up, etc. Uh, may maybe for integration tests, this kind of comes in useful, etc. Right? Um, and you kind of have to start thinking a, bit, a little bit about, you know, your, your whole test structure. This is kind of a fairly classical layout of of, of, of a Python package. Um, so where, where you have your package and then you have your tests uh, next to it in in a separate directory. You can mix in your test modules in between your packages as well. That's also fine. Um, but the main thing here to point out is really um, this conftest.py file that in, are in, in the test directories. Um, conftest.py is another uh, concept that PyTest uses, and it's basically it's a per directory plugin essentially for PyTest. So, well, that, it means that you you can um, uh, use PyTest hooks as well as fixtures in conftest.py, and everything in um, in that, so if you create a, a fixture in the top level conftest.py here, all your tests will be able to see the, those fixtures. If you create fixtures in, the, in your um, in the test PKG um, package conftest.py, that, that, then only uh, the, the modules in there will be able to see those fixtures. Um, so moving on a bit, um, PyTest has this uh, minus minus fixtures argument. Uh, and that's 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 quite handy because it shows you all the fixtures that PyTest knows about. Uh, if you, if you want to know you know this test module what fixtures are, then you can give the path to the test module to that as well. Um, 
I've actually trimmed the output because uh, it, it also includes, for each fixture, it includes a description, which it basically gets from the uh, doc string. So whenever you write fixtures, it's kind of good practice to, to write a doc string for it as well because that, that will describe your fixture. Um, if you also use minus minus verbose um, with this, then it will even tell you which um, file and which line number you, that fixture got defined on so you can quickly find your fixtures as well and, and, and look at the source code for them. Um, these are like the built-in ones. The first two are to do with uh, output capturing, if you want to play with that. Monkey patch is a very useful one, which I will uh, talk about next, I think, or shortly. Uh, PyTest config is kind of the internal configuration of Py.test itself, which sometimes for more advanced things can be useful. Um, and then uh, rec uh, record, warn uh, record warnings is uh, to kind of play with the warnings mechanism in Python and uh, temp TMPDR is a temporary directory, uh, per, per test temporary directory kind of thing, which I also talk about. The other nice thing that it does, it's, um, it shows, so, so PyTest supports plugins uh, and it shows you the fixtures of uh, any plugins that you got installed as well. Uh, in this case, PyTest capture log, uh, I usually have always installed because it kind of integrates nicely with the standard library logging um, module. Um, so monkey patch. Um, monkey patch is a is a is a, is a fixture itself, so you can request it in your test, uh, and it, it's it's very straightforward basically. If it's got two ways, um, so a set after is one of its methods, uh, it's, uh, and it's got two ways of invoking it. One is uh, where, where you just give a string, and Py the test will kind of figure out what to import and what um, object you actually want to um, patch. And then the second item is, is being the patch. And here, here I'm using the um, mock library that's uh, now in uh, Python 3, uh, uh, I think, nowadays. Um, the, the, the second way of calling set after is, is just like the built-in set after, actually. So you get the object uh, string of the attribute, etc., and then you set it. Um, very convenient. So basically, a after the test is run, uh, it will automatically get undone and um, so, so all the patching gets undone. Monkey patch has a bunch of other uh, very useful attributes. Um, Satatter is probably the, the one I, I tend to use most, but it also got um, delatter for deleting. It also got set item, delete item, uh, set env, delete env for the environment uh, variables, and then it's got methods uh, to play with the current working directory as well, and one for. Uh, one for playing with sys.path. And again, you know, all those changes will be just applied temporarily during your test only, and they will be nicely reverted uh, after the test has been executed. Temporary directory is another uh, very useful um, default fixture. So in this case, uh, th there's this uh, write function that I, that I want to test, and it takes a file name and writes to disk. It's not. Uh, Usually that's that's, that's uh, quite quite hard to go and find out in a, a test framework where, where you want to go and create your temporary directory, etc. Uh, in this case, all, all you need to do in, in the test, you request a temp TMPDR fixture. Um, Pirate test will create a temporary directory for that test, um, and uh, and then and then you can go and create files and other directories and anything you want, kind of in there. The only thing is that you. The TMPDR is kind of it's it's a pie. Uh, if you look at the print statements I did and, and at the output sh shown shown by it, um, it, it it's a it's a pie path local kind of uh, instance, which is sort of a, a, a an object which is not really standard, but it's it's very convenient. The methods on it are very once you get used to it a little bit, it's very convenient uh, to work with. Cert certainly in tests, kind of um, so. You can just kind of use dot join to, to create a different file. You then get another instance of that object. Um, and that's why I, you have to use stir um, to, to, to kind of take the string of, of, of that object. And that will actually be the path name uh, of, of the file. Um, and basically, so, so I pass that file name into the test function. And then to test it, I can just call dot read. And dot read, uh, dot read and dot write are, are not quite what you, uh, you used to by normal file objects, because by the, the, that object, um, the PyPath local uh, object, you kind of end up, uh, it, it always will read the entire file, basically. So there's no like seeking or anything like that involved. Um, it's very convenient for testing generally. Um, 
So yeah, just be there. It's not a no normal file object. It's not um, just a string either. Um, but it's actually a quite a convenient object once you get used to it. Um, the last thing with temporary directories is that PyTest will actually leave your temporary directory in place. So after your test is run, so it's convenient if, if you get some failures, you can go and, and dig around and, and look, at, look at all the, the temporary directories that were created. Uh, it will actually start deleting them, I think, it, if you get, uh, so you can see kind of it's numbered. Um, so after, I think it keeps four, four um, temporary, four iterations basically of when it was run, and, and then it will start deleting all temporary directories, so they, they're not going to sp uh, sprawl out of hand either. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know some more advanced um, features. Um, another um, useful uh, thing is, is kind of, so, so you may have noticed that um, the fixture so far was for every test was invoked. So if you get quite, um, if, if you use your fixture a lot and it's a quite expensive setup or, or it's, I don't know, so some environment setup, it might be creating a database server or I don't know what, um, that, that, that's not really practical anymore. So, so PyTest has a very kind of natural way of uh, making fixtures, kind of, kind of caching um, the results of fixtures in a way. Um, and it just does this by the scope argument to the uh, fixture. Um, so, so by, by adding the scope, uh, the, the fixture will be kept alive for the duration of that scope. So in this case, we're using a module scope. So that fixture will be created once the first time a test function from that module needs the fixture will be created. And it will only be destroyed after the last test function that in that module that needed the um, uh, fixture ha has, has executed. Um, there, there is, so, so yeah, if you look carefully at the example, uh, you'll notice that these two numbers of that object are the same, so the idea of the object is the same, so it's being kept alive. Um, the, the, the default scope is basically function scope, uh, as you can probably guess. Um, so, so you get function scope, class scope, module, and then there's one up, which is session scope, which is for the entire invocation and will persist over um, multiple runs. Uh, sorry, not multiple runs, but um, you know, multiple modules. There is obviously nothing stopping from fixtures depending on other fixtures. So uh, this is actually just a variation of what you've actually already seen with um, the request um, fixture uh, that's uh, for final adding finalizers. Request add finalizer is just a fixture really. So so you, you can you know you can create a, a fixture that uses another fixture, one or more other fixtures. Um, in this case, I create comma separate file. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for is that if you use um, different scopes for your fixtures, they have to match. So you can't, you can't de depend with a session um, scope. You can't depend on, on, on a fixture that short lifts, that only has to live for one uh, function or something like that because um, then you're going to get scope mismatch error. So sometimes you may have to work around a little bit. You may have to split the fixture in two to make that work. Uh, what one part is session scope, one part is function scope, something like that. If if you if that um, if the scope mismatch just uh, causes you problems, um, but in general that's kind of solvable. Um, obviously, there's also nothing stopping you from just defining the same fixture again. Uh, so you can do this in, on different levels. So, so you, here, here there's a module level fixture, and then there is a class level fixture, and they're both called the same. Um, in this example, I use the module level fixture and the class level fixture. Um, even that's not really required if you just want to completely override it and change the name. There's nothing from stopping that, or stopping you from doing that. So, you, you can yeah, you can build fixtures from all these fixtures and different levels. You can extend them um, in in bigger test suites. That that kind of <coughs> becomes uh, quite useful. Um, the next very useful thing is parameterizing uh, fixtures. So parameterization is, is kind of, um, it, it automatically, so, so what, what you get here is, is you say, you know, I want this fixture, but I, wa I, I want this fixture twice, really. I want it once for, for the first parameter, once for the second parameter. You do this by the params um, keyword to the fixture decorator again. Um, you, you can get inside the fixture, you can get access to that parameter by, by requests.param. Uh, and then you can return different things or you can decide kind of what to do with that. Um, th the very nice thing is that what, what PyTest does here is when 
whenever you get a test that uses that fixture, it will actually run that test twice, so once for each parameter. Um, even better, if, if your test requested two fixtures and um, both of them were parameterized, you would get all, all the combinations kind of as, as, as well. Um, so so it's, a very, it's a very convenient way to, to, to comprehensively co cover all kind of um, cases of parameterization. When you run that um, same test, you kind of, um, part of the test is, is, is very helpful in, in that it tries to ten, tell, tell you, um, I'm using minus verbos here, so I get actually full, um, full line of, of which test is getting run. Um, and it tells you actually which version. So in, in between the square brackets, it will tell you which uh, parameter of, of that fixture is, is being used to, to, um, for the test. Again, in the failure, you will see what the parameter was um, in, in, in your test. So, so it, it's easy to find back to, to what, what, which part is actually failing. Um, another thing that we use quite commonly is uh, Skipping tests, skipping tests in fixtures. So this is, we tend to do this quite a lot for um, more integration tests, where we we may try and rely on a service that is only available in our office or something, or on our test infrastructure, uh, maybe a data sp database server or something like that. Um, in general, you can do something basically like this, but where you you can just use the um, pydesk to skip in in your test. And that will skip the test that was relying on this fixture, basically. The only thing to look out here is that um, because the, this fixture is not scoped at any, anywhere, so it's, it's not being cached, so each test function will execute this fixture again and will, will execute the code, uh, in this case, try to connect to the server, uh, and, and will then get, get to the skip um, thing itself. Uh, so, so you may want to combine that with scoping um, again. Um, extending that slightly because that's sort of a dangerous situation, I think, where, where you, um, uh, so, um, so, so the scenario there was kind of, oh, oh I'm running this on my laptop at, at home or something, uh, so, so I don't, I don't want to get a failure for that, um, skipping instead, but it, you don't want that same test ever to be skipped when it's being run by your CI service. So what we sort of do is we introduce another uh, command line option, and here, PyTest, that option is, um, it's kind of one of the plugin features. It's, it's a hook that PyTest allows you to use. Um, so uh, we basically add, add a command line option um, w which the CI service will be setting. And in that case, I, I changed the behavior of the fixture to, okay, thank you. Uh, in that case, it will change the behavior of the, fi will change the, behavior of the fixture to um, check for when, when it can't find the server, it, it will check for that option, which it does by pytest config get option, which again is, is pytest config is a fixture. Um, it will just check that option and, and I'll get a clear failure on, on the CI server if, if my infrastructure is down or something like that, and instead of just silently passing and, and us ne not noticing for weeks. Um, so that's something that uh, we find quite handy. Um, I think this is the last thing to um, cover, um, which is auto-use fixtures. Um, auto-use fixtures kind of, um, uh, they're basically, they're, they're fixtures that get executed for each and every test function automatically. Um, the example I'm using here is um, with, with a marker, so um, it's, it's a quite silly example uh, to be fair. But um, I, if, if you know PyDetest test markers, uh, you can basically just, with a decorate pi test at mark dot something a name in this case OS X only, um, you, you can mark test functions and, and then you can you, you can you can see that uh, test functions are marked and and you can do various things on that. One of the way of to do this is, is quite often is to use um, well the most obvious way is to use an auto use fixture. Um, so so it gets executed for each and every test, and the main thing here is that it uses the requests uh, fixture itself. And request that node is something is, is basically information about the, uh, the the node that's being executed. So the node will be the uh, test function in this case, uh, and then keywords is a uh, is a dictionary of of um, dictionary of things. I will say uh, it, it, one of the things it, it contains just more more than just the uh, marks that that are applied, but um, the marks are basically in in that dictionary, and. You can you can find out what mark there is, and then you can do whatever logic you want, basically on on your test. 
um, in this case, I'm kind of skipping um, if it's not on OS X or something like that. Um, it's yeah, it's a fairly convenient. Um, it's it's a nice integration with with, with Marcus really, but all your fixtures um, do have its use. Um, apply marker. Well, this is um, sort of a variation of the same. Um, th this is kind of a little bit more more, more tricky to use, uh, I think, because apply marker is. Uh, it, you, you can sort of apply markers yourself on other uh, on, on a function, um, but you kind of have to make sure that the level where you've defined your fixtures. So fixtures will obviously. Um, so if you have an auto use fixture at I don't know uh, in a confessor pile pi and then one in your test module, the confessor pi one will be run first. So you you if you do use apply marker, it's kind of the equivalent of, of putting the decorator on your test function on, on your node. Um, so, so a, a late a fixture that gets run, executed later will be able to see that marker, um, so, but there you have to be careful that you know that the, the order the fixtures get executed in is correct for apply marker to 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 be found. But it does allow you to automatically use markers, uh, for example. Uh, and I think basically, yeah, um, that was it. I hope that was useful somehow. And uh, yeah, any questions? Um, so the question is: Is it, is it possible to to generate? Um, so basically, randomly parameterize. Yes, I think is it. So 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 uh, on on the fly, generate a parameterization list which may come from random data or something like that. Um, the you can probably use a generator for uh, in the params argument for for uh, the fixture decorator. I've never tried that to be fair. But another thing you can do with by the test is which is also supported is. Um, uh, yield um, based fixtures um, so you can actually write a fixture I think the decorator is like different you do at pydesk dot uh, yield fixture yield underscore fixture instead of uh, the normal decorator uh, and then you can just write your setup code yield a value write some more code yield a value etc so you could probably quite easily do it that way that if you want to completely randomly generate your fixture data Um, I think so, yeah. I don't see why that would be a problem. Some other libraries have some problems. Sorry, so question by the way was is, is it possible to um, mock, mock uh, init methods on, on uh, classes? Uh, I think that's not a problem, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Yeah, so that's right as well. Um, th there is uh, a, a more cl uh, classical, I think it's PyTest generate. Um, th th there's a hook in, in PyTest as well that, that allows you to generate tests. Um, I'm not, I haven't used that myself, um, but that's another way of generating uh, uh, tests on, on the fly as well. Um, so yeah, th there's several variations, I guess. 